Hey guys, welcome back to Theme Park Fantasy, and today we're going to the experimental prototype city of tomorrow, or Epcot, as most of us know it by. Uh, we're going to be going to both World Showcase and Future World in this one, so we're going to go right ahead and get right into it. But before we do, if you would please like and subscribe to this video, so that way you never miss something from us. Alright, our top 10 tips for Epcot. Now, coming in at number 10 is you can get breakfast in France at Les Halls before, before 11. So, the thing about World Showcase in Epcot is that it doesn't open until 11 o'clock in the morning, but the park itself usually either opens at 8 or 9. So, this kind of leaves you with a lack of breakfast options because most of the restaurants are located in, you know, the that world showcase with that in mind though you can actually go to les halls which is the kind of really cool bakery area in france and pick yourself up a breakfast croissant a sandwich stuff like that those that is really good food it is one of our most recommended quick serves in epcot and the fact that you can get breakfast from here before the rest of the area opens is an added bonus i actually think they have some drinks available too if you're into the early morning brunching thing all right next up at number nine we have spaceship earth is changing soon so ride it if you're coming here anytime in the near future yeah i love spaceship earth it has actually become one of my favorite rides as i've gotten older and stuff but it's a little outdated at this point and when it starts to become like that more often than not disney decide to refurbish it update it with newer concepts or change the concept slightly so they're not so outdated and with that comes a new narrator and usually new scenes and updates to old scenes. So if you like the look of Spaceship Earth right now, if you're a fan of it, you should probably ride it within the, you know, the next few months to half a year because after that, they'll probably take it down for renovations and you won't be able to do that anymore. Alright, coming in at number 8, we have Living with the Land is a great rest stop. Living with the Land is actually one of my favorite rides at Epcot altogether. It's a very peaceful ride. It's tranquil. It's kind of cool to get to see how they grow different plants and where, you, where your food that you eat comes from. It's a really cool ride. Uh, on the other hand, if you're very hot from a day walking in the park, you're exhausted, you know, you just want to take some time off your feet, rest a little, it's a great ride for that. It's air conditioned, the ride boats are extremely comfortable. I think that it is like, many people make the joke that you can take a nap at the Hall of Presidents in Magic Kingdom. This is basically that here. It's a nice ride that's just very nice to relax on for, you know, a good five minutes. All right, at number seven, we have the best restaurants are Tokyo Dining, Rose and Crown, and Tutto Italiana. Yeah, this one is completely subjective based on our opinions, but you're here, so our opinions are right. At Tokyo Dining, it is one of the best dining experiences. It's my personal favorite here because I love sushi. I love Japanese food. The portion sizes are really good, and I think the prices are really good for the portion sizes that you get. Not to mention you have a fantastic view of the lake and sometimes the dining show at night if you happen to be seated near one of the windows. Rose and Crown is another really great restaurant. I actually, we funny enough put off going to Rose and Crown for a long time because we weren't sure we'd like English food. Uh, turns out we do, number one. And number two, it's really good because if you do, especially the dining shows at night when they're doing the new Epcot shows, whether it's fireworks or the in-between show that they're doing right now, um, it's a really great view. They have great food, and it's one of the few places I've ever been to where the dining package for a dining and show viewing ticket had unlimited alcohol. That's a big bonus. You don't usually find that in Disney World. And then the last one is Tutto Italiana. I know that this is um, Beth's favorite, and it is just a really nice upscale Italian restaurant. The food is prepared really well. I mean, the meatballs are fantastic. Spaghetti and meatballs, something you'd never talk about. It's like one of the best things at this restaurant. Um, it's one of the restaurants I don't usually care for a polenta because it's usually a very bland dish. Here, it's it, it's made exactly like it's supposed to be. It comes with a lot of red sauce and different meats. It's it's a really amazing restaurant with, for a great experience. Overall, I think these three restaurants will give you the best experience and we certainly have different dining reviews on those so if you want to learn more about those go right ahead and check them out uh all right then and moving on to number six there are four different joffrey's carts in epcot, epcot and one of each of them will have a different drink for festivals yeah okay so joffrey's carts are placed strategically around epcot there are four of them and each of them have different alcoholic um, beverage specialties during festivals since Epcot has festivals most of the time out of the year, you can get different specialty drinks from all of these. A lot of the times, like during food and wine, 
they're even kind of part of a special event where they'll give you like a little stamp menu so you can basically collect the you have gone to each cart and gotten a different drink um and you won't be able to cross the drinks like you can't get one drink at the other cart they're very specific to each cart it's kind of a fun little activity if you're looking for something extra to do but you don't want to do like say one of the wine or beer flights just around world showcase and at number five, we have, you can see fireworks from certain um, vantage points and some offer dining pa packages. Yeah, for restaurants. So basically tying back into what I was talking about with Tokyo Dining, Rose and Crown, um, Tokyo Dining is just a restaurant that has a very good viewpoint because of where it sits high above the people and it has those really nice windows. You can see part of the show at night when they're doing the um, fireworks display. As for Rose and Crown, Rose and Crown both has window advantage, and it actually has an outside uh, seating patio area that actually has the dining package that I was talking about. Uh, other restaurants that offer this are like San Angelin it, over in the Mexico Pavilion, and I want to say there's one more, but I don't remember where it is. It might be somewhere in France. Um, those are all places that you pay extra, obviously, for dining package to see the show, but you get a great view of the show, like so close to the water, and the food is really good in that point, so it's usually a very good view. Okay, number four. There is a character cavalcade that goes around that has anyone else on it. All right, so due to where we are right now in the world, we don't have standard character meet and greets anymore, but we do have character cavalcades. Um, as far as I know, they're only doing this one in Epcot. I have not seen others, because usually the characters in Epcot are actually placed in like areas that are roped off from guests, and they're kind of just left there to roam around and wave hi to them. But for Anna and Elsa from Frozen, they actually sit in a horse-drawn carriage and will make a round around World Showcase. So you can wave hi to them and you'll actually see them go right past you. It's a really cool experience, especially if your kids love Frozen. So be sure to keep an eye out for it. Number three, the park is still under construction. This is probably one of the most relevant pieces of planning information that we can give you right now because, yeah, this park is really torn up right now. You can't even walk through the center of the park to get to World Showcase. You have to walk around either side of Future World to get to World Showcase. So it's not the most convenient. I won't say that it impacts too much other than say like Mouse Gear right now is still closed. They moved it to a smaller store but the real Mouse Gear is still closed. Because of that you're not going to get the full experience for Epcot right now and you might be better off planning a later date if you want the full experience. Especially after they issue out some updates and they finish the construction. Number two, bring comfortable shoes and pace yourself. This is given information for Disney in general, but especially for Epcot, because in my opinion, Epcot is the worst park to walk in. Yes, Animal Kingdom is larger, but you're going to be walking more in Epcot, and I have never had more issues with tiring myself out or ending up with blisters than I have at Epcot. It is like, you wouldn't think it would be because it's the second park, second oldest, but it is the worst park in my opinion to walk around. Keeping that in mind, you should pace yourself, wear really comfortable shoes, don't wear high heels, don't wear flip-flops. Yeah, I know some of the fancy restaurants have um, really upper scale dress codes. You may want to wear sneakers to there and have a change for heels or other such items in your purse or bag so that way you can just swap them out there. You don't want to be walking around this park in anything other than really comfortable walking or running shoes. And number one, if possible, try to come for the food festival. Yeah, so Epcot is a great park on its own. I mean, it is enjoyable. It has a lot of Disney nostalgia. But even I won't lie when I say that the Food and Wine Festival is what makes this park. It's the most popular event for the park. And it is the thing that fans most enjoy. And that's because of the sheer variety of food that you can get at the Food and Wine Festival. This isn't cheap by any means. I mean, you can certainly spend hundreds of dollars before you even get halfway around the world due to the different alcohol and foods that you can sample from the carts. But the food is consistently really good. And the drinks are usually really good too. It's a great variety. If you wanted to try uh, food from different places, you know, like Madagascar and the Caribbean and Spain and just Greece, they have tons of different food options around there. And it's a really nice experience just to walk around, do that and have a great time. All right, that has been our top 10 tips for Epcot. If you'd like more tips, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a message from us. This has been Jace for Theme Park Fantasy. You guys have a magical day.